Hey, hello and welcome, YouTube. We got another weekend of games to go. A lot of quick ones. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the Toronto Defiant versus the Houston Outlaws. Going to have a run through this one. Uh, obviously, main story of the weekend, Toronto Defiant picks up Aspire in a short-term contract due to illness uh, for a bunch of their players. So Aspire comes in. Aspire, pretty good at the game. Kind of fucks, which was awesome to see. Awesome to see contenders, rookie talent coming into the league taking it to uh he didn't have as good a performance against the outlaws as he did against san francisco shock um but it was still a good performance nonetheless uh the outlaws playing very well making making a uh, a name for themselves that they are one of the better teams we have in the june joust and is outlaws gonna finally be able to like make it to the playoffs i don't know yet i don't know i, I part of my brain makes me feel like they're gonna fall a little short but uh we'll see we'll see let's have a look at this uh, and let's go into it. I feel like Logix might be worried about Aspire's debut. I don't see Defiant picking up Aspire on a full-term contract when they have Logix, when they have Hisu. Both of those guys are, like, as much as we talk and we have been hyping up Aspire, I would say Hisu and Logix are at the same level, if not better, because they have more experience than Aspire. I think there are a lot of teams that could really benefit from Aspire that aren't the Toronto Defiant. So I kind of hope Aspire doesn't get signed to a full-term contract on Toronto because I honestly think he'll just ride the bench. And I don't want to see a player get promoted only to ride the bench again because we've seen a lot of players do that and they get caught in this situation where they're stuck on the bench. It's hard for them to prove themselves. It's hard for them to really get good practice because they're not competing anymore and they end up sort of running at it. So vancouver yeah uh, spider vancouver could be an interesting one sort of add, uh, add another layer there so we'll, we'll see we'll see um outlaws come out with a lucio moria arisa rush uh defiant are playing the same thing with a baptiste a second shield and a doomfist actually they're not playing the same thing at all they're very different uh they're just playing with lucios uh but they're gonna run at each other really fast so let's see what happens here spy getting a ton of damage in but yeah Outlaws, I think the May is just very good. Unless the Doomfist punches someone off the bat, I think the May is generally going to win that that neutral fight. So, so let's see. Because playing against the May here is actually awful. So usually you just get May Ward. Thoughts on that Remy guy? He sucks. The sound very loud. Wait, the game sound is very loud? Alright, here we go. Coalescence, good wall. That's a great that's a great engage. Aspire literally just getting caught. Couldn't get around the wall like his Arisa could. Oh, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I feel like I've noticed this a lot by Lastro, primarily. Same thing with when he uses Coalescence, his windows. I feel like he's very willing to drop an ult in a what's seemingly very losable fight. Like they always, they're in a massive disadvantage and he's willing to drop it. I think it's cost them a lot of ults uh, in the past. So I want to see if he keeps doing that. Maybe I'm just remembering from this match, but he's done I, he's done it multiple times. Like I remember being like, ooh, last row. So... Sadie so doesn't look that comfortable on Orissa. I feel like Orissa is such a team synergy thing. Um, but I'll keep an eye out on that, so. Maybe to disengage? Yeah, but like you don't want to use an ult to disengage. They've already lost the fight. They're two down. You don't want to use an ult to try and get away from that. You just want to run and hope you lose anything. If anything, dropping an ult is going to force your team to commit more. Unson Jay get drops the beat. Great wall, great bong. I don't know what's happening. Oh, Dante gets punched from Narnia. Doofus is very good against Symmetra. That was well played by Nice. Good beat by Juby. But I think... He thinks that that's not going to be enough. Nice Doofus. Nice has been very impressive to me. I think Nice has done very well on a lot of different heroes. I really like his... Uh, I really like his Echo. I really like his Tracer. I actually really like a lot of what Nice has been doing. So he's impressed me a lot this season. Maybe the bongos this weekend have been questionable. Yeah, bongo is an awkward one though because you want to put it in line of sight and how fast the game is being played. It's very easy for it to just get overrun, right? Tower, 
Rookie of the Year. I, I, I think as much as we're like nice is nice, it's like it's hard to give Rookie of the Year when you got people like Shy and uh, Gaga and you know all those kind of players, right? Like there's a lot of very good rookies this year. Piggy, yeah, Piggy is another great example, right? So, oh, good, good flip around this. Oh, it feels like no one everyone was on the same memo. Dreamer flanks around and wants to go to white while Dante tries to force a uh, a mail through. Great bomb by Piggy though. Opens it up. All right, Michelle goes down. So uh, this should be a pretty brutal stagger, but should just be a one of those things of like they're just staggering, but they're never gonna get it. The, we, if we saw anything in the Shock versus Dallas match, remember, Lucio Moira, like Reaper, these fights turn around based on ultimates, right? Like Defiance coming in with ultimates, they beat. It's the same way. Like there's so much sustainability with these Lucio Bap, Lucio Moira compositions that, as much as you have positional advantage or you get the first pick, ultimates are generally king. Like if you have a coalescence, you're at a massive advantage. If you have a, um, if you have a uh, like a diva bomb, you're at a massive advantage. If you have an echo ult, massive advantage, and you can actually stem the bleeding of a player disadvantage. And those things generally give you massive, uh, massive windows to you know, overcome what looks like losable fights. Not gonna lie, people sleep on Juby. He's been very good. Juby has impressed me a lot, actually. I was I was hesitant on Juby, but he's actually been quite good as well. So. Oh, Happy gets pushed into a place that... Uh, and then they use the Coalescence out of this as well. Winnable? Yeah, with Lashra going down, good beat. Yeah, and, and that's sort of the prime thing. Again, Happy literally dies before anything happens, but they have Coalescence, they have beat. They can just walk at the opposition team with the amount of sustainability that gives them and just win the fight. Did you see Jake's stats on Mercy? No, I didn't. Well, they, he actually played pretty well in Mercy. I, uh, he, I actually remember like seeing he had a couple of really good reses. Uh, he didn't, he wasn't getting picked. He was going and playing aggressive. He actually looked really good on the Mercy, so. Hello. Score. Zero. Cole to win, yeah. Like Cole is, Cole is such a big advantage in these comps. Just the amount of sustainability and damage it provides in these like brawl fights is just insane. He has like a 73% team fight win rate on it. Yeah, you need to remember he is playing on a very dominant team as well though. So like I, I, I think team fight win percentages is a very skewed one, right? I like looking at stats where it shows that he individually is popping off. But as I said, Jake's, Jake's been passing the eye test. Mercy is a hard one to get good value stats on how good Mercy is. It's usually just do they pass the eye test? And I think it's been good. Spy gets happy off the bat. How does a spy get happy off the bat? That was the world's longest flashbang. Nice play. Nice play. Kind of clean. The thing that I like the most about his his aim is so clean. Like that widow shot he hit was crazy. Best head for the hills. I'm on fire. Like, I can hit those shots, like, once in a blue moon. But I, I'm, like, flicking my mouse around as it's happening, and, like, it's it's kind of like gambling. It doesn't happen consistently, but just, like, looking at the way he aims is, like, you... you it's just consistent, right? Oh, someone keep him alive. Ah, uh, he got hit with the mind game. Doing well though. Okay, great peel by the uh, the Defiant. Clean, clean. Do you think a spy gets pulled off full time? It's it's kind of interesting. It's hard. There's not a lot of teams that are looking for a good hit scan right now, right? Like there 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 aren't a lot of teams that are in that like thing of like they want to pick up a rookie hit scan. Like, I don't know what, like, you know, obviously they have Linksa, but would he be good on Vancouver? Obviously a uh, hybrid, but then London is a European team. All those kind of things, right? So, and I think like Onigod is, has been perfectly fine. So I don't think there's a lot of openings and windows and opportunities for Aspire, even on Toronto. I said this before, like they have Hisu and Logix. They don't really need Aspire. Yeah, oh, London has Sparker now too as well, right? So it's like... 
Wow, Put him on wow, Dallas? Yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting one. Yeah, I'll stack. Thank you for the two months. Blase also plays London. Yeah, but Blase's a flex DPS. But they like, London has, uh, London's about to have Shax, Hybrid, wow, and wow, Sparker. Wow, wow, like, wow. London really doesn't need a Spire either. Miracle Whip. Thank you very much for the Prime Gaming sub. Welcome to the fam. Spire with another high noon. Oh, you got pushed out of the lamp. That's kind of funny. Toronto's been playing this very well. Good engage by London. It was expensive though. Cost some coal lessons, copy, pyramal. I think this meta is so hard to see the advantages, this Lucio Morricom. Do you think if Defiant would have played, taken one map from Houston, Aspire wouldn't play? I think Aspire played well. Even even when he was on, even when like the, they were losing maps, I think Aspire was good. I don't think you can point at Aspire and be like, Hisu or Logix would have done better. I don't think you can do that. I, I don't think that was where the differences were made. Like, you never say never that like, oh yeah, Hisu would have taken a map. Like, who knows? But I think Aspire played very well. Do you think they, they still win? Oh, you're, you're talking the other way around. Do you think if Hisu was in, they wouldn't have got the map? Uh, no, I don't think you can do it the this, this same way the other way, right? Like, you can't... Aspire was good, but, you know, Hisu could have easily been better. And stuff like that. I don't think you can make these big differences. This is a kind of a really awkward fight for, the uh, for, uh, for Defiant, right? So they go in. They drop the beat, but Happy dies. And then they're just caught in this, like, white room, right? Of, like very awkward fight for the Dallas. It felt like... I don't know why they felt the need to go so aggressive. They walked into this situation where they had to walk through a choke. And then as soon as Happy goes down, they just don't have enough damage to get that fight. So... Defiant should get the point back. Oh, it kind of seemed like you were very, really disappointed on Titans on the broadcast. I, I, as I said, I think I misspoke a little bit. I was a little harsher than I wanted to be on the broadcast. Um, about the Vancouver Titans. I'm more pointing towards the org than I am to pointing towards the player. And I think I misspoke when I said the players don't care or the players aren't trying. Um, that's not really what I meant. I'm, I'm more saying I want... I'm just trying to be motivating and push these guys forward to be like, hey, let's get hungry. Let's get driven. That was not a great game. Time to like... I want to see them making steps forward and making steps to improvement so that they don't just go through the motions and end up 0-16 because they have good players. So, and they... they it's not like the players are just aren't even showing up or even aren't even practicing and stuff like that so that's what i was going for so but i think like i, I don't just want to like brush off a loss like that and be like oh you know bad luck for the vancouver titans like they didn't cap a point they didn't look they didn't look good doing it either so we have a lot of teams that haven't got a, a match win or have very little match wins but you know we haven't seen a match like that before so i i think it's it's good to sort of try and push this player and put this onus on the players that hey it's like hey let's let's go guys like time to time to bounce back from this let's try and find a solution all right let's uh let's keep going on this review there dreamer guys saying i really don't like this comp by the outlaws um in this point eh. I, I say that, but do I really hate it? Like, this is kind of what Dallas and Shock played the whole time. Theoretically, if Defiant get point control, they should have a massive advantage. They have the shield. Outlaws have to be incredibly fast tempoed. I think it's a lot of it is on Nice to get high value to counter aggress with the Doomfist, right? He needs to get these punches. He needs to get these values. So let's see how it works out, actually. I'm kind of curious. Alright, uh, so there goes the lamp, the aggression, and th this is sort of, if, if they live through the lamp and they live through the initial aggress uh, aggression, Define are just going to win it, right? Outlaws are playing, <clears throat> and this is kind of the difference, people always ask me, what's the difference between Brawl and Rush, right? Defiant is playing Brawl, Outlaws is playing Rush, Defiant has high damage, but they are very, uh, plastered on the point, right? They want to play this slow style on the point, um, while Outlaws... They don't want to stand anywhere. They're fucking running at you with everything that they have 100% of the time. They're always going to be one of the ones who engage first and get the first pick. Um, and that is the difference, right? Defiant are trying to outlast the Outlaws while the Outlaws are trying to overrun the Defiant. 
Are you impressed with nice performance in the league as a whole? Yeah, we actually just talked about it. Nice has been very impressive on multiple different heroes as well. So I've, I've been a big... I'm a nice fan now, uh, these days. Usually wins out, out between Rush and Brawl. Depends on the meta, if I'm being honest. Uh, I think we're starting to see Rush might be the king of Brawl. It might overrun Brawl right now. Everything is happening. There's a window, there's a beat, there's a coalescence. And here's the value of the Outlaws thing, right? Is they have so much sustain. This is a prime example of Brawl versus Brawl versus Dive, right? Let's 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 break this down a little bit more. Okay. Um the Houston have their coalescence. They're gonna go. They just rush the backline. That's that's their entire strategy. They rush the backline. They use the coalescence, they use the beat, they're trying to do, but they need to get a kill. The beat by Anson J is so well timed. It's later than the Defiant, uh, the Outlaws one. It is, it is very uh, high value. It keeps everyone alive, and they just sustaining, right? Once this window, uh, this wall goes down. Once they have the beat, you can see Defiant are just trying to create distance from the Houston Outlaws, and the Houston just don't have enough sustainability. They don't have enough damage to take a long, long fight. So as soon as they didn't get that initial pick, the fight's essentially over. As soon as that Anson J beat went down, this fight was over. So great play by Defiant. BQB's Bob, <laughs> thank you for the Prime Gaming sub. Who do you think is better at Echo, Nero or Doa? That is impossible to say. They're both phenomenal Echoes, so. Nice didn't get much value with that, that. So Nice goes in with the Bongo, doesn't get much value. This Dream of Primal is good. It creates so much space, right? And you really need this Primal to create that. But yeah, the tank ults just give him a lot. Nice doesn't get enough enough value from his uh from the well, they don't get enough value from the bongo or the doomfist uh engage and that just gives outlaws almost a free win hello hello there excuse me last triumph let's let me read this i think people need to accept that shock versus dallas was two teams that both aren't even going to compete for june joust dallas for June Joust, that's uh, Dallas can't play hit scan or flankers and will get pounded by teams that have superior Echo Ash comms with Orisa, and it will be proven when Glads stomp the shock. That's bait. Hey, 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 stop that. That is a that is a copy passer if I've ever seen one. If you legitimately think that I I, I can't I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. There's that I there is a world in which gladiators and the double shield and the Arisa comps are better and it will cost the shock in Dallas but no 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 not not to that degree not to that degree it's going to be competitive absolutely and it could easily go the other way like the Winston rush comps could easily just be better <laughs> stop <laughs> no 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 all right no spam in the copy pasta All right, so beat engaged by the Defiant, holding on this. D Outlaws are out of bolts, right? Huge kill by Dante on the last row, though. They need that uh, that bat for sustainability. Also, Juby's about to get the beat, right? So they, they're gonna get the beat. That should give them the ability to just run over them, right? Beat engage, here you go. I love the counter Diva Bomb by, uh, by Michelle. It kind of like stems the aggression from the Outlaws with that Diva Bomb. Juby can't die here. Defiant gets the point. Yeah, this is that was, that was well played by Defiant. Outlaws, uh, de they did not have any tank ults and not getting enough value from the coalescence just sort of cost them. So, what is happening over here, though? Lastro is getting spawn camped by Piggy. And Crip. Interesting. Lastro is. <laughs> Lastro was not happy with this dive and decides to take matters into his own hands. <laughs> Just fucking <laughs> stay away from me, bitch. I have, I have an amp matrix. <laughs> hey, it works. It, it honestly works. It stems the bleeding. It works. As much as it seems like a questionable decision, I actually... It, it, it works, and I like it. Anson J can't die. Ah, that was kind of bad by Anson J. It should, it should be fine, because they have the bongo. Oh, Juvie gets a spire as well. That is a good pick by Juvie. Yeah. Outlaws are coming back with ultimates. They have the, the Piggy can come to the point with the Diva Bomb. He's over here. Crimzo has the uh, the coalescence to sustain. If they can just live and keep overtime going, they're in a good spot. Piggy, I, Crimzo shouldn't have gone for the point. He should have. There needed to be communication that Piggy was about to touch. If he had stayed alive, 
keep Piggy going, help Sav a happy stay alive. I think they actually could have potentially turned this. It still would have been hard, but yeah. I think, yeah, Bongo, a situation where Bongo is able to just exist and like affect a bunch of people in overtime push is just so strong. So Toronto get the first map. Big plays, big plays uh, by Toronto. So let's keep it going. Now the Outlaws get mad. The Outlaws get very mad after uh, after losing this map. And this is what you love to see. This is sort of the difference between the Outlaws and previous uh, previous iterations of them. They Once they lose a map, it, it, they seem to get stronger. <laughs> They're just like, fuck you. We're not going to lose. They also show their flexibility in this match. Uh, I don't think Defiant... Honestly, I think Defiant looked good on that Orisa comp. Outlaws sort of playing uh this winston rush comp they didn't look as good at it uh as the shocks and the fuels uh, but i think in this orissa mirror comps with dante on echo happy on this thing they play the mercy they just look better they, they just straight up look back better than fine we're gonna break that down Alright, let's see what they do here. He's an angry. Do you think there was a big difference between Dreamer and Jangu? I don't really know the difference right now. I, I don't completely understand the subbing strategies. It feels like Jangu comes in to play the Arisa Ryan. Dreamer plays the Winston Wrecking Ball. That seems like the simple answer of what is happening if you're just looking at a surface value. It does seem... I don't know what is wrong with Jangu's dive heroes. Maybe they've scrimmed and like they prefer dreamer and that is why they got him hey it, it could be an improvement i don't have a big problem with it uh they ha i think they've been less successful with dreamer but that's just i think that's more outlaws are less less successful in the rush i just think as a team not just dreamer they're not as good at that composition but i like that they're still playing it and trying it because they're gonna need it in the june joust playoffs i think maybe it's shot calling maybe yeah it could easily be shot calling you know jangu uh piggy uh sorry Dreamer has played on a lot more Western teams, and I think his English is a lot better than Jangu's. Could easily be that. Also, when Jangu plays, um, usually when Dreamer plays, Jake doesn't play. So maybe there's a difference there of like the the comm structure of how they're do doing that and building that. I don't know. As I said, we don't know. Uh, I think Johnny actually tried to reach out to Harsha or someone from the coaching staff of Outlaws if they would want to make a comment that we would talk about on the show to sort of like clarify it but they didn't want to comment they they didn't want to give an answer to johnny so we don't know we're just speculating at this point then it's a lot of aggression coming in from toronto defiant with the echo mercy they're playing so aggressive that means the outlaws are flanking right like where's where's dante all right dante's all the way over here right so it seems like they're both sort of giving up the tank line i think the defiant went first though right they, that was good play by the defiant playing aggressive Okay, they get they get Anson J. So as long as they recover and they don't lose any more people, they can come back with an advantage. Dante loves the flank route. Well, you also see Happy playing it. It feels like the way that Outlaws are playing it uh, is they play Arissa Sigma Baptiste play uh, play together as like a best friend squad. Happy plays flanky and Dante plays in the air, just trying to murder as many people as he can. Aspire taking Dante out of the air. Let's have a look at this shot real quick. Bonk. Nice shot. By Aspire. Hits the shots. He needs to hit those shots. That was a great play. Disgusting. Alright, Flux goes down. High noon. From Happy. Gets him taken out. Wow, great play by Happy. Good, good insta res by Anson J though. Good rock. It's just great play. Great play by Piggy. Great play by Outlaws. Playing it smart collectively. And Outlaws do this so well. They just play it smart. They play it slow. They get the picks. They get the advantage. And then they know how to like 
temper their aggression, right? They know how to play, use ults to just sort of close out the fight. Piggy moment. You honestly think that Echo Reaper can compete against Echo Ash Orissa? I think it's map dependent. I think on control, the Echo, uh, the Echo Reaper, like Lucio Moira, is just plays too fast that it beats out these Orissa comps for the most part. Uh, I think, I think that's the trend that we're starting to see. But I think you also see, especially in the East, people aren't playing as much Winston. A lot of people were trying to play this Winston, Echo, Ash, Mercy style. And I think people are starting to realize that the Orissa is just better and you're better off co uh, pocketing your Echo to be more aggressive and having like a flanking Hanzo or a flanking McCree and I think that's the tendency that we're going to as, as at least the Orissa right I think you can make the Ash work but I don't think you can make the Winston work the Winston's just too susceptible to death literally completely useless without a Nano then you have to play a Nano instead of a Baptiste it just becomes this like too many resources are getting invested to make the Winston work when you can just play Orissa so, Spy gets happy. Good kill. I thought Orisa was winning until SF and Dallas, but neither team really tried to play the Orisa. They definitely... Both of those teams leaned heavily towards the Winston, but that's because I don't think... Uh, the, the, you really need a hit scan or something like that if you are going to play the Orisa, so Dallas aren't going to play it. And Shock seemed confident in the mirror, and they seemed confident with Smurf on the Winston, so that's why they both played the Lucio Mora. So that's why I really want to see like an Atlanta or a Houston play up against, or a Gladiators play up against a Dallas or a San Francisco Shock, because I think that's a clash of two styles right there. Adaptive circuits engaged. Orisa. I don't agree with this copy by Nice onto this Orisa. I think he's he's too aggressive. I I, I don't really understand why he did that. Just instantly gets taken out. Spy gets too aggressive. Gets flashed, gets killed. That's it. That's a bad death as well by a Spy. Obviously, I like that he's going to make a play, but yeah, that's a bad death. Because like once again, Houston Outlaws, they know how to they know how to aggress. They're just gonna go forward as soon as they get that advantage into a cap, right? Yeah, I don't want to break in too much. Unfortunate things to find won that point. I don't want to talk too much about Dallas versus Shock. We'll play it. We'll go. We'll go have a look at that match. Um, yeah, we'll go have a look at that match in our own time, right? So, I think we'll probably do that tomorrow. That match is probably a tomorrow match where we'll break down and review that one uh, in the morning. Dante's Echo just too clean. It is very good. There's another very early window by Lastro that I don't. I don't know if I like. They didn't really get enough out of it, right? They get a kill, but... All right, double fluxes. Good. Ansan J Vax. Jake actually great presence of mind to not Valk in that... Uh... Great presence of mind to not Valk here. A lot of people would have Valked, especially seeing as he's in it as well. I wonder if he was afraid of dying and that's why he didn't want to Valk. Does Michelle get rocked? Oh no, Michelle just dies. Good res, but that's a great bongo by uh, Jangu. Even if they don't get kills... Oh, wow. Spy gets Crimso, though. Even if they don't get kills, they get so much advantage. Dante does not want to let anyone leave. And this is this goes back to what I keep saying about Houston Outlaws. They understand when the blood is in the water. They know when the aggression needs to come out, when the right time to use their ults are, when the right times to push are. They don't seem to, like, force it, but they seem to understand their win conditions. <clears throat> this is Michelle's second, if not failed, flux this, ma this map. I don't have a problem with that last flux that he did where he died. I think he did a good job. I just think Outlaws did a good job of countering him as well, so. Sato going down. This is really bad by Sato. He's just too aggressive in a situation where they're not taking space. Aspire is literally their only team, the only, sorry, the only t player really holding them in this match. Aspire is getting a lot of high value headshots. First on the Crim Crimzo, this one on the Happy. It's not accounting too much, but they're, they're good picks. Like, you can't ask for more from Aspire.
How could Defiant so, uh, sign Aspire so late? Uh, it, he's on a 30-day contract. Aspire is on a 30-day contract, short term. If you haven't been paying attention to the news cycle, a lot of Defiant players got quite sick. Uh, Logix and Hisu were both sick enough that they couldn't play. So I think the Overwatch League has uh, uh, enabled a 30-day contract for Aspire to come in and play. He's not gonna. He's not permanently on the Defiant roster. He is just coming in to sort of fill in while those players recover. <clears throat> Turns out Aspire was the sickest one of all. <laughs> ah, classic. Alright, let's see how the Defiant do. Aspire was popping, Aspire was very good. Do you think someone will pick him up? We, As I said, I talked about it earlier in the review, if you want to go check that out, but I don't think many teams need a rookie hit scan right now. More like a rookie Western hit scan. As much as that's kind of a sad, uh, unfortunate reality, everyone's everyone's pretty well rounded on all, a, a lot of their roles. Um, and I don't think, know if anyone's going to take a risk. I might be wrong. There might be teams that do want to sort of invest, but yeah. He's he's done a good job of proving himself. I think going into next season, he's at least proven that he he should get a trial from everybody, right? Maybe Titans, yeah, maybe Titans are the biggest one, but even then they have Linksa. It's like, I maybe aspire over Linksa, but then like, you, you got to remember, right? If Vancouver wants to do that, they need to sign another player. They're not just going to drop Linksa. That's, they, it's literally going to cost them at least $50,000 to make the upgrade from aspire, uh, from Linksa to aspire, if they think that is in their best interest. And it's very realistic that, you know, I, I, I've shown my frustration. A lot of that is towards the organization as a whole. I'm frustrated with Vancouver and I don't see them making that decision. So. Aspire more consistent? Yeah, and I, I think I can understand that, so. I don't like Defiant. So here's the here's the Defiant. I don't like what they're doing here of they're playing every, they're playing their, their the front line with the BAP is playing out of this room. I don't like this because they're in such a massive choke. It allows Outlaws to literally spend their entire damage. Look at the Outlaws can just look at this doorway, right? But the Defiant are trying to go for these flanks, but they're not synergized, right? It feels like they're, you know, the front line's going in while the back line's, the, the DPS is still trying to take space. And look how much value Happy gets here. Look at this flank by Happy. It's so big. I don't like Defiant. <laughs> Taken out of context. Ugh. So he do, he gets the pick and then runs. He doesn't get out and it gets res, which is bad. But I think the bigger issue is I'm surprised that the outlaws didn't collapse on this. Like, I feel like they were all here. They're so focused on the front line that they don't collapse on this. So it creates this like massive negative. Oh, sick rock by uh, Michelle on the piggy. But they should still cost them right there. When you go for the Mercy, yeah, and, and as I said, I don't think, I think his target selection was wrong. I think the flank was good by Happy, though. He hit a massive flashbang. If he hits the Mercy there, that's a great play. This is where Aspire hits some insane shots. All right, let's, we'll go back and look at it. Whoa. Oh! Oh! Okay, Aspire. I see you. Corey 2.0. I actually like that a comparison. Isik, thank you for 17 months. Hope you're having a nice day. I am. Thank you very much. And Hananas, thank you for the 28 months as well. Thank you very much for the resub, guys. Good pull. And here's the problem that you have with Hanzo is consistency, right? Oh, I like the dragon. Dragon's good. Unfortunately, gets put, punished by the uh, by the echo, and that is you, that is the thing you have to be most afraid of in this meta is just having a mercy echo land on top of you because you're just not going to live that. Happy is just living on the flanks. He's not even playing the, the same game. I think he understands that there's double shields. He just needs to get value on flanks, right? 
He's just he's just running. This is a sick flank by uh, Happy. He gets both supports with that play, right? And that's why I actually kind of like the uh, the McCree over the Hanzo. Is Hanzo can absolutely log people, right? In uh, Aspire just showed that he, you can hit some nutty shots, but I think McCree can be more threatening if not more consistent, right? Okay, we got double windows. Are you awake? Sorry, I was thinking. Um, I just sort of watching it go by. All right, good flux. <laughs> Are you awake? <laughs> Sorry, I, I was yeah, I was playing double shield gameplay. I was just AFK. Just thinking out loud. Yeah, and you kind of like that rotation. Yeah, I. It wasn't bad. I just think that they. The problem that Define are having is they're having a tr trouble keeping Happy in check. He's buffering. Yeah, sorry, my brain legitimately just lagged. I think they're having a hard time dealing with, uh, with Happy. I think Happy is living on the flank rent-free, and they're not having anyone who punish him. I think that has to go on to uh, Nice, right? I think Nice needs to start looking for uh, Happy if he's going to do that and punish him. Fun fact, the official name for a loading buffering spinner is a throbber. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I, my brain was having a throbber, is, uh, is, is what I'll say then. Alright, let's go. Oh, Anson J. That's just Dante just winning the, winning the duel, right? Like, that's just Dante beating the other combo, creating so much space. How does that happen? How do they lose so badly on the flank? Oh, nah, that's just way too aggressive by Nice walking into that room. Because they, they can't even res, right? Losing that duel, there's no res. Sato gets punished because of it as well. Dante's just, yeah. Just built differently, yeah. I know this feel. Uh, this is me whenever I shoot a sleep dart. I just, I'm like, okay, I just want to give a jiggle peek and then shoot it. And then you just shoot it straight into the wall and you're like, shit. <laughs> it's fine. Nobody noticed. Wall slap to wall sleep push. Great. I think this is the defiant. Look at how much space the defiant have given here. The, the, here's a big problem with the way the Defiant are playing right now. Look at how much space they've been they've given the entire Outlaws. They, it didn't cost them anything to get here. They just walk up, drop a shield, walk, t drop an Ant Matrix, and then they, they have an, uh, the advantage, right? And then look how defensive Lastros is, right? Best case scenario, it forces the Outlaws to back up a little bit. But worst case scenario is it just you're just counted yours, and you lose an advantage. The Dragon's phenomenal by Happy, um, because the Lamp just gets insta-killed, because they gave so much space, right? Usually you see these dragons happen and there's a lamp 
that mitigates the dragon. But because they've already given so much space to the outlaws, the lamp doesn't get value. Michelle dies. They have point control, and this gets really hard for the to find a win. Nice has to do so much with this copy. Yeah, and, and, and all that goes back to just not playing aggressively enough, I think, right? Oh, that was a whiff by Piggy. That was very unfortunate that that was a whiff, actually. There's another flux, though. Dude, Echo is just chaos, man. I swear to God. Many people are sleeping on Dante's Echo. I... Here's where I disagree with that. I, if you can point me towards someone who thinks Dante's Echo was bad, I will, I will, I would eat a hat. No, not true. I'm not going to eat a hat. I'm going to ban that person from my channel. Dante's Echo is sick. One of the best we have in the league. And anyone who says otherwise just hasn't been paying attention. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. Defend of too late. You said you'd eat a hat. <laughs> it's on. It's on the record. I think we're just uh, uh, used to Dante being slept on. But anyone with any, like, any brains, that sounds aggressive. Anyone who... <laughs> I gotta stop saying shit that could just be, like, taken as a derogatory. Anyone with, like, who's been paying attention. Anyone who's been paying attention to Dante through the last couple of seasons knows that Dante has never been the problem. Dante has always been insane. This is just the first season that we've seen Dante on a team with great teammates around him. Great synergy, great coaching, all that kind of stuff around him that's enabling him to play and compete as one of the best players in the world. And that's why I think a lot of people don't think he's been there in the past because they're like, oh, Dante's never been that good. It's like, yeah, but it's never really been Dante's fault. It's always been... He's been kind of stuck in, in jail. He was on season one shock, and then he's been on Outlaws since season two and season three, who have, have had pretty tragic performances, unfortunately. So, MVP candidate, that's my hot take. Um, the Houston Outlaws as a whole is going to have to do a lot better for Dante to go into the MVP conversation. Oh, no, I forgot about this. This is actually the biggest bait. Like, why does this balcony exist? This balcony is such a bait because it makes you think that there's going to be a platform, right? Like, your brain dictates, right? That if you land on this, it would be, it would make sense that it cuts off here, right? So you would have something to land on. And we've seen so many people done it. I've done this in my, in my career of Overwatch. I've definitely jumped off and fallen off here. Like, a lot of people have made this mistake. It's the exact same thing as this hole right here. If you've never fallen in this hole, you you are lucky because this hole is like the ultimate fuck you. <laughs> it's like, why does this hole exist? The raucous hole, yeah. So I, I I feel for nice. I feel for nice. Caster just hopped in to say thank you for the vods. These are great for me since I have literally 10 hours diff to you. Good night. Hey, peace out, Clay, man. I'm glad you've been enjoying it. And I, I'm i glad I've been able to put this stuff on YouTube. I'm glad people have been enjoying it. I Like, so many people are saying they love my reviews. And, like, it felt weird when I first started doing this, just, like, cutting my stream. But there's a lot of people who can't catch it live and are too... I wouldn't... Like, it's just too difficult to go back in the vods, find the vod, find what, which matches I did. So it's been awesome to be able to just put that on YouTube. And people to be able to enjoy the content so i'm glad you guys have been popping off it's very easy content for me to upload because it's stuff that i was going to do on stream anyway so pog for you people yeah dante gets on sunjay this is just like some mistakes by defiant right they it, we're two and a half minutes in and there's just like they haven't been able to get any space spy goes over to the hanzo What do you think of a Spy so far? Uh, yeah, Spy's been really good. Uh, he definitely has a future in the Overwatch League, hopefully. He's a grinder. He's been in contenders, sort of, you know, making his name. It's awesome that he's been able to be given this opportunity, right? Oh, there's the Flux. That is a fatty Flux by your boy, Piggy. And Defiant, here's, here's the point that I think that Defiant are at, right? 
it feels like they've lost confidence in their flanks, right? It feels like they've lost confidence in their ability to take space. Like, after this happens here, once they get punished over here, you know, Nice goes for this flank, then Nice falls off on the other flank. It feels like they've lost that. And it feels like they're not comfortable doing it. So they're walking in as a unit, and it's creating outlaws, giving outlaws these massive opportunities to get these big fluxes by uh, Piggy. And they're not applying enough pressure that's giving Dante just stupid amounts of space. Did the remake buff make D.Va the best target to copy? Uh, yes. I, th I think so. I think the, the copy gave him an extra thing, but I also think D.Va was good before. Like, I think the difference that we're having now is previously in the dive, Winston was very good to copy in the main melee. Winston was a great copy under the uh, thing that you were always diving. We we're playing a very dive heavy meta, right? Uh, last uh, in the main melee. In uh, this one, there's a lot less dive targets as a Winston. So D.Va, I think, is generally better because you have defense matrix. You ha you get a D.Va bomb. D.Va bombs are super valuable in this meta. You can dive. You can do all of these kind of things. It's just D.Va's so versatile. And then you add the re-mech is another nice little thing to have. It's just so versatile. And it's never... I don't think I've seen a D.Va copy that I'm like, that wasn't very good, right? You see a 3k re-mech? Yeah. I think... I hope... Blizzard nerf the remake in the future. I really do. I think the I think the remake is a very poorly. I like that it does more damage. It shouldn't do 250. Do 100, maybe 150. Oh, where this is? Look at this miscommunication. Nobody else is is ready to go in here, right? And Piggy, Piggy, Juby, Happy aren't ready to follow this up. Dante's coming in the other end, so it should be fine. It's going to be expensive, but it, oh, actually, even Dante gets. Yeah, this was this was a really poor aggression by the the houston outlaws a rare mistake from the houston outlaws uh as of late that looked like yeah bad communication dante and jangu wanted to go but no one else was ready oh and the range the range of the mech is actually a good one as well like it's very deceiving how big the the radius of that cooldown mech is so slappy o'malley thank you for the 15 months Piggy's trying to win this? Piggy and Django are trying... There, are they actually going to pull this back? Oh my god. That was great recontest by Houston Outlaws. So they lose that fight. Crimzo's caught. Crimzo dies. They have six players. Six versus three. And Dante's coming back on the Echo. Django's coming back on the ball. 6v5, theoretically. Dante gets Sato off the bat. They get a great push on the thing. Oh my god, that is just... You can't ask for better than that. Look at that synergy and that coordination. Also, Dante's really fucking good at the game. So, Crunk Monkey, thank you for the prime sub as well. Welcome to the fam. Maybe hot take. Adding Echo to this game was a mistake. I think... Echo is cool, fun, and adds a lot of exciting concepts, right? But I think this meta in particular is showing how uh, power creep is a very big thing. Like Echo is just so strong in this meta. And Echo is just the, the embodiment of power, power creep. So hopefully they can find... Oh, that's not what I want. Hopefully they can find a way to uh, balance Echo in some way going into Overwatch 2. Ready. Yeah, and I think the biggest issue that we're having right now is that with Tracer and Sombra out of the meta, Echo is just by far the best candidate and, like, by far the best hero. Like, I think you can make a lot of justifications for the second DPS on other things, but Echo is, like... I think Echo... What do you think? What's Echo's play rate right now? It's pretty high. I would say it's probably, like, 90% right now. Would you say, like, 90%? It, it's... Echo is being played in the rush. It's being played in the brawl. It's being played in the dive. It's it's literally being played in every comp, and that sort of highlights what's wrong with uh, that. Echo is just overtuned in some way. I think a poke is. I think it's the fact that Echo does everything so well. It's not only like her poke is too good, her that kind of stuff. I think she does everything too well. Um. So. 
Watch it not get banned. Well, next next stage we don't even have hero bans. So Echo will be in here once again. So Outlaws are going to hold close with the rush. So they're going to play close with the rush. I actually kind of like this comp. I don't... Th I think the... I don't think the Ash style is as good for Outlaws as you would want it to be. And I think you want to hold this high ground close with the Reaper. They understand that if Defiant can't get space because you play a rush, then you're in a good spot. If Defiant can get here and not have anyone die, they're in a good spot. Oh, Sato's in an awful spot though. Yeah, that was kind of unfortunate. Next tournament, we don't have bans. No, so the, it's uh, it's like staggered. So it's like no hero bans for first stage, hero bans for second stage, no hero bans for third stage, hero bans for fourth stage, no hero bans for um, playoffs. Yeah, it should be called hero pools, but I was just sort of responding in a way that people understand. Um, where, yeah, because we're not allowed to say bans. They don't want us saying bans. Oh, actually, I forgot that they were on... I, Outlaws was on attack. I mis misremembered that. But I actually kind of hope they play... Uh, the rush on defense as well. I actually think that could work very well. But here's... That's the value of the Outlaws comp, right? Of this is why we see a lot of teams playing this style. And kind of why that copy pasta that we saw before is a meme, right? The, the double shield with the Ash is a lot of damage. But if you can find a way to rush the tempo and play incredibly fast using the Lucio Moira, you can actually overcome the double shields. And I actually... I'm actually impressed with myself. I'm going to pat myself on the back here right because if you go back and look at my meta report that i did three weeks ago i literally called everything that is happening i called it good job me high five i said that we're gonna start playing double shield because you're not gonna be able to play the winston with the sheer amount of damage and then i said that's gonna enable rush which will then be the counter to double shield i said that Custer's ego. Boom. My head is expanding. Let's go, me. I'm <laughs> proud of you. Thanks, TJ. <laughs> Custer the wise greater than Johnny Wise, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I thought our skits this weekend were so funny. I, I think I think Hex did a great job. Uh, and everyone did a great job. So Custer the Clever. <laughs> that is a great idea. I'm going to pitch that. I'm going to pitch that as the counter to Johnny the Wise. Custer the Clever. That's a, that's a great. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to take it that idea as my own. Dual color coordinate on purpose. We do from time to time. We, we like to keep the, a little bit of synergy. Daddy the Diviner. <laughs> That's actually, you guys have got my like brain flowing. I gotta do a Custer the Clever segment where I call Johnny the Wise a hack. And then I like make my own like predictions. Call him a fraud. All right, you guys got the juices flowing. Dude, look at that dive by the outlaws. And you can see the Defiant just can't get any space right now. They want to play this double shield with the sheer amount of damage that they have. But Dallas, uh, sorry, Houston is just like upping the tempo to a place that they can't play. It. Sorry, the Seer. <laughs> that's great. That honestly, that's great. I don't know. I, I don't want to take away from Johnny's shtick, so we'll have to we'll have to go pitch it. Uh, but I think that could be good if we all come in from a week by week thing, and we all have our own like we all have our own like psychic type things. Good idea, chat. Good idea. Yeah, you guys, you guys, you guys are great. I'll, I'll pitch it on our meeting on Wednesday. <laughs> Stop doing work for free. No, 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 no. Keep the juices flowing. Good job. Pay us, pay chat. <laughs> I, I wait. I will show you one. Let me show you one thing. I'm sorry, bye. For a, for a, for a future segment, I have chain mail. So, uh, 
this is a let, let me give you a precursor to a future uh, future segment. Just just giving you a precursor. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but we're going to be out here. Make sure to tune in to Watchpoint Pre-Show. <clears throat> you look like a medieval maiden. <laughs> okay, well, I feel I regret putting that on now, and we're gonna have to reset the segment. <laughs> Cost of the fool. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Happy hits a spire with a dirty arrow. I don't think Anson Jay is going to be able to get that res as well. He is. Oh, they got kill on Dante as well while they did that. So good play by the Defiant. That's a great Diva Bomb as well. That's just good play by the Defiant. That splits them up, forces them forward. Big, big plays. If Cuts is a Jasso with a horse, <laughs> I'll be disappointed. I don't know what you guys think the production budget is, but I think you guys are aiming a little high. Also, I don't know how I'm getting- we're recording a horse. <laughs> there's- a, there's a lot of questions being raised. Alright, let's see what we got. So obviously we've had Outlaw switch over to the double shield as well. I- I love this decision and I'm gonna keep singing the praises of the Outlaws is they understand that they can't play the rush. This third point, it's too much distance to close, you can't play the rush. Too much damage. Uh, and especially because they wouldn't be able to control this high ground from Nice. I love that they switch over to double shield trying to play their own ways. Oh, Dante gets Nice again. Bit of a bit of an echo diff. Nice has been playing very well, but Dante keeps getting the better of him in the first kills. Like I don't care about once the fight devolves, who does what, but Dante keeps getting first picks under Nice, and that's a big problem. Great res by Anson J again though, and they recover on that fight. This is becoming a watch point preview. <laughs> Perfect. the shield sorry my brain lagged again oh uh, we got the window with the shield we got the bob coming in outlaws have a lot of ults literally all you have to do is look at this top four section and just see how many ults are flashing that's how you know um that's how you know that they're just like they're just accumulating ultimates and that was the problem with what defiant were doing is they were using a lot of ults and they were winning fights but outlaws were just banking that shit bank it bank it bank it bank it and then they just walk in pop it all and then they just walk in and take the take the advantage. Good play, good play by the uh, by the Houston Outlaws. Ma, Ma, Mad Mad Max Live. I got it. I got there in the end. Thank you very much for the eight months. Much love. Much love. All right. Was this a full hold? Did Outlaws full hold every round after the first map? Damn, dude. Outlaws were mad. One. Holy shit. I didn't even realize that they full held everything. A. Like, it wasn't like a... It wasn't like a Vancouver Titans full hold. Like, Defiant are definitely putting up a good fight, but... Like, especially on their defenses in some capacity. But, man. That's crazy. It, it is also... These are, these are three maps that are very conducive to full holds, though. Uh, Rialto, Volskaya, and uh, Numbani are very heavy. And I think it goes back to what I was talking about on Volskaya. Just Defiant don't feel like they're comfortable enough. Um, they don't look comfortable setting up and, um, like, taking space. It feels like they're really struggling to get on top of Happy, punish Happy, deal with Dante on the flanks. So for that reason, I think they hold pretty well. Like, not great, but they hold okay. 
but as soon as they need to take space themselves be you know be be the uh, aggressors they really struggle so that's where they need to work out they were sending a message <laughs> we are very angry us Houston Outlaws are angry and you if you take a map off us we're gonna get you that is the Houston Outlaws right now that is that's them that's their that's the Houston Angie voice that I've, I've given I've coined for them <laughs> a Welsh in our a Welsh laws <laughs> I'm gonna stop before I before I say something <laughs> before I like butcher it even further Yo, actually, talking about watchpoint segments while we're while we're watching this full hub, what do you guys think of my southern accent? Talking about Houston Outlaws, what did you think of it? It's pretty good, right? Yeehaw! Yeah, on point. Yeah, that was it was pretty good. Like, we're gonna go back and what we're gonna. I want to like sort of highlight where this goes wrong, right? Kind of a war crime, to be honest. <laughs> All right, so here's here's my problem with what is happening here, right? Defiant is gonna go aggressive for some reason. They're pocketing Aspire instead of pocketing Nice, which I don't really understand. I guess Nice has the copy, so they wanted to pocket. But Sato's walking up before Nice or Aspire are in place, right? They're they're using the lamp before Aspire even uses the copy. That's a problem. That, that's like a lack of synergy. Aspire only just makes the jump up, right? I would love to see Nice and Aspire make some form of move before Sato walks up because this costs them a lot. And as much as it ends up being okay, Spy gets the control of uh, the space, helps kill Dreamer. Um, nice gets in the back line, gets a great copy. The cost of that was that their front line got murdered in, in the process, right? So look at this. And this is what it cost them. So as much as they did get the advantage on the flanks and the flanks did get value, the front line was dead before it even happened. And then they just get double flux because Echo exists in the game. Um, so no fun. I need to f try and force it, but they don't have the play for picks for instead. Yeah, so um, it is it is interesting with the way they define. I think they're just a, I think they have the right idea. They're playing the game with the right idea, the right comps, and that that kind of stuff. I actually really like how the define are playing. Uh, I just think they're a little the way they're executing it is just a little off, and I think it would work against most teams. It's not going to work against a team like the Outlaws, who look very well uh, well oiled on this composition. Hey, Casa, so I'm from a Houston fan. I am so glad that Blizzard is giving such a shot at voice acting and accents. Bravo on the uh, attempt. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What can I say? I'm a, I'm a professional. That's why they pay me the big bucks for my accents. What other games will we review today? None. This is going to be my last review for the day. I'm about to head off. Um, unfortunately, you're doing some stuff for Memorial Day, so which will be nice. Taking a day off. Uh, but yeah. So look at this, uh, look at this disengage by, uh, the Houston Outlaws. So, they drop the window, they get the lamp, they're like, shit, Happy goes down. Look at this disengage by the Houston Outlaws. They did the same thing on Volskaya. They lose the advantage, they understand that they're not thinking, they're not giving them everything for free, but they're giving them enough to just disengage. So they get the bongo and the bob out, which is huge, right? They got two ultimates out and they can just give them the point. You just disengage at this point. I love the window to sort of stem the bleeding a little bit. They don't want to let everyone get to the point, allow them to three exit. Stem the bleeding, drop the window, give them a couple of ticks. Wait, where the fuck's Dante as well? Yeah. Enable Dante to be a distraction, right? Give that, force them to do something over here. Then re-engage with your own bob. Happy comes with his bob, drops it on the point post bongo. And then this is this is like the opposite of what happened with the Defiant. Look at how well they trade the aggro and the timing of when they go. Dante starts taking the space, which then makes Aspire look at him, right? Dante's like, oh, yo, look at me, Aspire, look at me, Aspire. As they do that, Bob and Piggy uh, walk up with Dreamer on the, with the Arissa. As soon as the Arissa and the, the Bob take the point, look at how much they've had to focus this Bob. Dante's fucking in it. He's in it. He pushes a spire, knowing that they're gonna be, in pr they're gonna have to look at other things. Spire gets punished. Lamp goes down. Flux is thing. That's textbook. That's a textbook re-engage. You can't ask for better from that, uh, better than that from the Houston Outlaws. So, big plays by by them. But that's just the coordination that uh, that I think Houston Outlaws have that is giving them these full full holds. And why I think they are one of the best teams in this meta right now of the double shield. 
yeah so for everyone asking i'll be reviewing uh shock vs fuel tomorrow so that, that's on the books i would have loved to have done it today but i didn't have a lot of time so i and i really want to do it justice i really want to break down i really want to watch it a lot so all right so here we go wrecking ball in defiance at this point they're just trying to touch the point it's gonna be very hard for them to win this i don't like this copy by nice i think if you're doing this you need to go something with damage i would have liked to have seen even the maybe an ash or a sigma like get a flux out because i think the bongo it's gonna be hard to get to the bongo for one but once he gets the bongo like this is a prime example of nobody is gonna value from the bongo other than himself all right happy just murders everybody and that is the ball game that is the ball game. Big play by Outlaws. As I said, that's, this is a pretty cut and dry match. I actually don't think... Tor Toronto actually look pretty good. I think they're a solid middle of the pack team right now. Uh, Outlaws, I think, are just better than that. How far the Outlaws are going to go is the real question. I want to see... Out Does Outlaws play this weekend? Uh, they play... No, they don't. So they played their matches. So we don't get to see Outlaws play against a great team until we get to the playoffs so i want to see how they do against their dallas's they against the shocks where they play that rush style because outlaws didn't look as good on the rush as dallas and shock and they lost to toronto the one map they lost but they look very good in the arista so are they going to try and force the arista against the rush are they going to mirror the rush we don't really know we'll see we'll see uh i hope you guys enjoyed this review thank you very much for tuning in and uh i'll see you guys soon peace out